you also see in the next bull market uh, a theme of the middle class participating in it, and that's probably not what yeah. we talked about in the next. That's one. That's one in meetings we had uh, in New York. Uh, what, what day were we in on the road all day? Tuesday. Yeah, we Darius and I always maybe Josephine, if you can call up slide twenty four. Um, I think you've seen this, Neil, where we show basically labor's <coughs> share of national income looking all the way back. And I keep saying, you know, from here, what you might want to do if you believe in mean reversion, i.e. the labor share going back to, as you, as you can see for people that are watching this now, you could see in the 1980s and 1990s, it was a much more fair fight. Yeah, you'd bounce around, <coughs> around the, the, the average there, but you would, you'd have significant periods where labor uh, would have a good run. So I keep saying you'd want to be long poor people. Uh, and you want to be short, rich people, and I, I don't mean well, to sound cavalier in no, saying it like that. But you want to be—you want to be long those companies that serve the middle class. I mean, yep. you know, you're thinking more of the Wall. Yeah, of that's thing. exactly and, that's General well, Mills, Walmart, totally, or totally. and I, McDonald's. And and here's what's frightening about that chart: is that if you think about a mean reversion in the labor share of GDP, simultaneous with a mean reversion. In kind of the long-term PE ratio. Oh boy, that's oh boy. like a double whammy coming at you. Yeah, you're going you know. too bearish on us there now. <laughs> <laughs> actually, so. Josephine, if you for, do you know what slide it is where we actually show that labor share versus profits? And, and your your point is, you can see it in the S and P margins versus the top. Uh, yeah. So if you do get labor share up, that comes out of the companies. Profitability right. comes down. So the way that you get, I think the next slide, Josephine, might be multiple compression. You know, there's a question. Uh, there's one chart that's in there where we talk about the potential for mu multiple compression as profits decline. You know, the thing about stagflation, like when people in the journal are asking about stagflation, as you know, the, the most representative period of stagflation was in the 1970s. That's when stocks went on average trade between seven and ten times earnings. Right. That's when Buffett's idea of buying companies and their cash flows was better than buying stocks because he just couldn't understand how the, the stock couldn't trade at 15 times earnings if he bought it at seven. Right. If it was always supposed to go to 15 times earnings. But stagflation really, that's the point. Your costs are going up and you don't have any pricing pressure or demand to offset that. And this is, this is the thing I think when you look at the people talking about uh, heating up of the labor market. If that's the cause, of, if, well let me just kind of if then, but if we are seeing which I, I don't know if we are, but if we are seeing some heating up in inflation, if to some extent that's actually being you know, cost driven because of you know, the labor market beginning to reach its boundary, um, that's, that has a lot of warning signs mm. uh, for equities because that, I mean, if anything gets that labor share back, that's it, mm. right? Uh, mm -hmm. People are going to be chasing higher and higher wages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. You tend to see that, that chart peak into, into market tops as well. Which one? Uh, 24 labor share of national income. All oh, right. Tends to yeah. spike into recession. Right. It's pro cyclical. Yeah, it's pro cyclical. Yeah. Okay. Exactly.